Shalom, first and foremost, giving all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, Bahashim Rechakudash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Greetings and salutations to you, Achim, upholding the testimony of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, in truth and sincerity. This is going to be a look into the law. Uh, and the law indeed is a very important, intricate part of this thing of ours. All right, it's the standard in which it's it's the measuring tool. It's the um it's the plumb line in which is used to decipher right from wrong, good from good from evil, just from from unjust. Now, the understanding of the law comes through the Holy Spirit. Because though, you know, certain individuals, certain Israelite groups, they boast of the law, but they don't understand the law, nor do they keep the law. Not in totality, nor do does anybody. There's no man that's perfect in the law, you know, save Yahweh Shai. All right? But through faith, through belief, through the Holy Spirit, we hope to be redeemed. And not justified by law, but by faith. But nevertheless, the law indeed is important. And so let's get into it, right? There's no, that, that's, it's not making an excuse just to do what you want, you know? The Heavenly Father can judge you by the law. That's, that's how we'll be judged. Now, His mercy, that's, um, that's, that's based upon His discernment and His desire. You know, but the the law is the standard. So this is the book of Leviticus, the twentieth chapter. It says, "And Yahweh spake unto Moses." Matter of fact, oh, let's get that. Let's get this in the blue letter because I might want to go into some Hebrew words. Leviticus chapter twenty. It's the book of Leviticus, chapter 20, verse 1. It says, And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Again, thou shalt say to the children of Israel, Whosoever he be of the children of Israel, or of the strangers that sojourn in Israel, that giveth any of his seed unto Molech, he shall surely be put to death. And what do you see? How, how, how is this modernly playing out? Through abortions. When you get it, when a woman gets an abortion or when a man pays for an abortion, even though they're, they're too, these people are, are too unlearned to understand what's going on, but they're putting their, that's a, that's a part of a sacrifice. It's a child sacrifice. All right. And you're doing it what for your comfortability. Now, these people, they don't have the intellect to know that they're worshiping other gods, but they are. You know, another part of giving your, you know, giving your children to Moloch is what these entertainers do when they sacrifice their children. You know, a lot of these children are put to death for fame. And, and, and the, the higher up elites, they know exactly what's taking place. You know. So you're not you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to get abortions. You're not supposed to kill unborn unborn babies. All right, and according to the law, if you do that, you're supposed to be put to death. It says, the people of the land shall stone him with stones. Verse 3, and I will set my face against that man and will cut him off from among his people because he hath given his seed unto Molech to defile my sanctuary, to profane my holy name. Verse 4, it says, and if the people of the land do any way hide their eyes from the man when he giveth his seed unto Molech and kill him not. So if, a, if somebody is to kill their, if, if somebody is to get an abortion or if somebody is to give their, sacrifice their son unto Molech, which is the idol. And of course, the modern so-called black woman or modern Negro doesn't have the intellect to know what Molech is. They don't know. 
but that doesn't mean they're not participating in activities and not exercising themselves after the worship of Molech. All right, that's what the term that's what the term um, um, Satan means, or that's what the term devil means. It means deceiver, and so the devil has deceived them to do things that they thinking is that it's on their own merit, and they they thinking with their philosophical self, or the the child isn't born, uh, so he's not alive. Yes, the child is alive, but you're but you're not alive, because the scripture says she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth, so you're the one who's dead. You were born dead. In the same way you sacrificed your child and you killed your child, the Heavenly Father, he's going he's gonna to abort you. And he's going to kill you. Verse 5, it says, Then I will set my face against that man and against his family and will cut him off. And all... It says, and all that go a whoring after him to commit whoredom with Molech from among their people. So everybody, if you, if, and of course we can't stone people for doing this now. But according to law, you're supposed to stone them. Right now, we just look to the Lord because the Heavenly Father is going to kill them. So we, not, we don't do that ourselves. Verse 6, it says, and the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits, which are witches and warlocks. So all these women that talking about they're a witch, talking about magic, talking about Imhotep, talking about ancient Egyptian gods and all this madness. Those are familiar. Those are unclean spirits. Those are demons. He said have familiar spirits and after wizards. All right. And these guys who selling crack cocaine and making crack. And making drugs and selling mollies and Percocet, those are wizards. Those are warlocks. These people are witches. All right? The term pharmacia, uh, the term pharmacy comes from the Greek word pharmakia or pharmacia, which means witchcraft and sorcery. That stuff that these people are taking and, 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 and dishing out in these streets is witchcraft and sorcery. It says to go a whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. It says, sanctify yourselves, therefore, and be ye holy, for I am Yahweh, your God. So we're supposed to be holy, meaning we're supposed to be set apart and separate from these type of activities and from these people. You're not supposed to kick it with a nigga who's selling drugs, who's selling crack, who's selling cocaine, who's making, who's selling Percocet and Molly. You're not supposed to kick it with these people because the Heavenly Father is about to wipe them off the face of the earth. And you don't want to be in the presence because you might just be, a, you might just be a, 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 a casualty because of your presence. You might have to get wiped too from just being by them. Verse 8, it says, And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I am Yahweh, which sanctify you. It says, For everyone that curseth his father or his mother shall, sh shall be surely put to death. So you can't curse your father or mother. You can't s s send up curses on your mother or on your father, man. All right, let's get that term curse. Let's get this term curse. In the Hebrew, Leviticus 20 and 9, which is um, Yaqalal in, the, in, the, in that context. The root word is Kualal, to be slight, be swift, be trifling, <laughs> be trifling. Let's see. Let's go down to be despicable, to curse, to treat with contempt. Bring contempt or dishonor. All right. Okay. So that's also, that's going into putting your hands on your parents. All right. So putting your hands on your parents or actually putting a curse up against your parents. You suppose, you're supposed to be put to death. According to the heavenly father, you're going to be put to death. The scripture says, Kabat Abaka wa Aimaka. Honor thy father and thy mother. That's a part of the Big Ten.
It says, shall surely be put to death. This is verse nine. Continue what he's saying. He says, he hath cursed his father or his mother. It says, his blood should be upon him. Verse 10, it says, and the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife. Right. So if a, if a, if you have sex with another man's wife, another man's girlfriend, whatever you call it, which is girlfriend's a bunch of crap. All right. You have husbands and wives and you have whores. All right. If a, if a, if a woman has a, a husband, if a woman has a so-called boyfriend, a man. All right. If a woman is engaged and then you and if you have sex with her, according to the Bible, you and her are supposed to be put to death. All right. If 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 a woman is dealing with another, if a woman is dealing with a man, all right, and she leaves that man. I'm gonna be honest. According to the law, if you want to be technical with the law, if a woman is dealing with a man and she leaves that man, and you are dealing with that woman, and you come back and you come behind that man and deal with that woman, you have committed adultery. If a woman is dealing with uh, somebody, and of course, you can't be over-righteous because we understand the condition that we're in. None of these women that we deal with are virgins. All these women are defiled because these women, this society has raised up whores. There's no guidance. There's no, there's no backbone. There's no structure to the society. So it allows these women to run wild. That's what the Iranians are trying to fight against now because the Americans are trying to compromise the Iranian culture and society by allowing their by ma making their women to be whores. And that's why the that's why the the whole uproar is Iran about is the Iranians don't want their women to be whores. Just like the the Taliban doesn't didn't want their women to be whores. But the Americans come through and they want their woman they want to make the women whores. Why is that? Why do why do the Americans in the West want the women to be whores? I'm gonna get a scripture. Because when the woman has power in the society and the women are, are, are harlots, that's how you conquer a people. That's how you. That's how a society is is compromised. All right. Why does America want to empower women and allow women to be whores? Is it for the the embitterment of the woman? No, it's not. This is the book of Mark. This is the book of Saint Mark, chapter three. Verse 27, it says, no man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house. So what are they trying to do? They're trying to empower the woman, which is that's a part of binding or enslaving or putting down the strong man. All right. They're trying to make man. They're trying to push uh, homosexuality so the man won't be strong. So the man's will be sodomites and act like sissies and be weak. Why? So they can come and conquer the society. That's what these people do. Why do you think they push homosexuality so much in Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians community? So they, that's called binding the strong man. Why do they put the? Why do they give the woman so much power in the Black community, so-called Black community? Because it's binding the strong man. Why do they have child support? Is that is that for the betterment of the household? Is that for the vitality of the children? No, it's not. It's to bind the strong man and to weaken the household and to ultimately weaken the nation. This is what these Edomites do. And don't tell me about women's rights. When it's more women being trafficked in America than goddamn motherfuckers smoking cigarettes in the 20s, man. Are there so many women and little children, and little girls being trafficked and raped all throughout America? It's all type of madness, man. All right, so many women that's homeless in America. Why is that? Because this society pushes this degenerate behavior where these women don't have structure. They don't have, we don't have strong households and families. All right, this is what Esau does. The scripture says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, man. This is exactly what he has done. And that's why these, that's why the Iranians are trying to fight against them. That's why the Taliban just kicked their ass out of Afghanistan. Because they still have some form of moral and honor about them. Though they don't have the truth, 
They still have some type of moral fabric about them. See, the thing about the West and Western women and just the West in general, even Western men, there's no honor here. There's no, there's no decency. There's no character. It's just filth and degeneracy. This society is founded upon, the pillars of this society is based upon filth and degeneracy and lewd behavior. And that's why this society is about to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles. So that's ultimately, they do that to bind the strong man. That's why they, you, they, the women are so stupid. The women think they're being empowered. They're doing this so they can come in and control the nation and control the resources. Anyway, let's get back to the law. It says... This is Leviticus. That's why the scripture says, I suffer a woman not to teach. Man, women don't supposed to have no goddamn power in society, man. All right? You see those, those filthy, those wicked-ass Iranians, the Iranian woman shaving their heads. Now, why did, what the hell is shaving your head doing? How is that adding to a cause? You cutting your hair off. When the scripture says the glory of a woman is her hair, that shows you how stupid these people are. They cutting their hair off. They running, they running in the streets dancing. Like that's liber how is that that's not women's freedom. That's not liberation. Alright. Uh, you just keep following the so keep following Biden and keep following these so-called white people. Go ahead. Go ahead. And let's see what that gets you. Have you seen the black community? You you Iranians. You do you want to look like the black community in America? Do you, do you want your woman to be prostitutes in the street? Is that what you want? And good, the Ayatollah need to, to need to neutralize more of those people. All those people who's, who's rebelling over there in Iran, they need, they need to be dealt with. And ultimately, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is about to deal with all of you, including your Ayatollah. The Heavenly Father is going to destroy all you nations because you are wicked. They have certain principles they stand for, but they're not, they're not serving the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. They're not. All right, so Leviticus chapter 20. And see, these laws are good for these laws are what is needed for a society to run to run properly. The laws of the Bible. This is what is needed to these are needed for the earth to run properly. But people don't want to follow the Bible. People want to do what they want. People don't have respect for the God of Israel. People don't have respect for the Messiah. When the scripture says, our Lord and Savior, Yahweh I came in the volume of the book. He's the one who wrote the book. He's the one who wrote the book in laser beams for Moses and gave Moses the 613 commandments and the 10 commandments. That was our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, and the fathership that did that. With the world called UFOs. But you don't get it. It's just too deep for you. You're slow bellies. And so, but right now, I'm going to say this. If you got, a, if there are women in a, if there are women in a camp, and this is going back to adultery in verse 10. If there's a, if there's, if there's a man who has a wife and he's an Israelite and he claims, and he proclaims to be an Israelite. All right. He's in the truth. He's serving the heavenly father, or at least of some format. If that woman leaves. You are not supposed to go deal with that woman, man. All right? You're not supposed to deal, deal with that woman. That's adultery. And we know some people who are guilty of that. All right? We know, and we know some people who are guilty of that. They just couldn't help but get sloppy seconds from, from the Lord's chosen, huh? And the Lord's going to with with deal with you for that, man. Your how about Shema Shah is going to destroy you niggas for that. IUIC. There's a lot of you niggas who do that shit. It's a lot of adultery in Israel, man. But they talk about law, law, law. But you don't keep the law. What did Yahweh Shah say? 
she, it said he Yahusha himself said, if you marry a woman that's already been already been married, you committed adultery. They don't want to talk about that though. Can't you can't be justified by the law, young man. It says, verse 10, it says, And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he have committed adultery with his neighbor's wife. It says, The adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. You niggas, y'all gonna be put to death. Don't worry about it. You're gonna, you're gonna die. And the Heavenly Father is gonna take care of that. Verse 11, it says, And the man that lieth with his father's wife, has uncovered his father's nakedness. So if, a, if your father has a concubine, this don't got to mean your mother. If your father has multiple multiple wives, if you lie with your father's wife, that is adultery. You can't lie with any of your father's wives or concubines. It says, both of them shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. It says, if a man lie with his daughter-in-law, both of them shall surely be put to death. They have wrought confusion. Their blood should be upon them. If a man also shall lie with mankind as he lieth with woman, which what is that? Sodomites. That's a man on top of another man. Let's read verse 13 again. It says, if a man also lie with mankind as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination, which means um, disgust. It says, they shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. So according to the Bible, being a, according to the Bible, homose homosexuality is worthy of death, man. Now, are we going to kill homosexuals? No, we're not about to do that. Because we're in a society that's run by homosexuals. All right? And so they make the laws. All right? So we can't do that. But you know who is going to kill them? The Heavenly Father. He's going to kill them with famine. He's going to kill them with thermonuclear missiles. And we're going to watch. And we're going to say, we told you. We told you so. Was Sodom and Gomorrah not a good enough example for you? Did you not go to and check out the archaeological remains of the sulfur in the, in the, in, in the Dead Sea? In the midst, in the presence of the Dead Sea? They didn't see, they didn't consider the science showing and proving that Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighboring cities were destroyed by um, fire and brimstone that came from heaven. Yeah, but the Bible's a fairy tale, but you don't even do research. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. You're about to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles and you're going to be put out your, your pathetic misery. These people are stupid, man. Your, your reality is a fairy tale. Talking about the Bible is a fairy tale. Well, the scripture said you should surely be put to death. And that goes for a woman, too. If a woman lies with another woman, she should be put to death, according to the Bible. She will be put to death. All right? Again, are, are we going to do that? No, we're not going to kill homosexuals. But guess who is? The Heavenly Father is going to kill them because he's not going to let them eat for three to four weeks. And they're going to eat and they're going to starve to death. Oh, just because we don't have the power to exercise the judgment don't, doesn't mean the Heavenly Father won't exercise His. He will. You didn't get away with it, buddy. Verse 14, it says, If a man take a wife and her mother, and it says, it is wickedness. So a man can't deal with... Oh, you, uh, if you have a wife, you can't deal with her mother. You can't have sex with the, your, wife, your wife's mother. Your girlfriend's mother. All right. According to the scriptures, it says it is wickedness. They should surely be burnt with fire. It says both he and they. So if basically you if you having a threesome or if you're just dealing with your wife's mother. All right. In that format, you suppose according to the Bible, you're going to be burnt with fire. And are we going to burn them with fire? No, but guess who, who is? The Heavenly Father, when Russia shoots intercontinental ballistic missiles over here, when the Iranians shoot missiles over here, they're going to be burnt with fire. It says, both he and they, that there be no wickedness among you. If a man lie with a beast, which is bestiality, which by the way is legal in America, America allows you to have sex with cows and have sex with pigs and have sex with dogs and marry trees. This, and this place is about to be destroyed with thermonuclear missiles. 
letting people marry trees and have sex with animals. This place is wicked, man. It says, if a man lie with a beast, he shall surely be put to death, and ye shall slay the beast. If a woman approach unto any beast and lie down thereunto, thou shalt kill the woman and the beast. They shall surely be put to death. Their blood shall be upon them. And see, if these laws were enacted, these you, you wouldn't have all these weirdos walking around here doing all this madness, talking about they want to marry a tree and, and having sex with animals, man. And having sex with the same um, gender. And, all this, and, and doing all this other lewd behavior. Verse 17, it says, And if a man shall take his sister, his father's daughter, or his mother's daughter, and see her nakedness, so if you commit incest, which incest, by the way, is with your sister. It's, it's different forms of incest. This is what this is talking about. It says, And she see his nakedness. It is a wicked thing, and they should be cut off from the sight of their people, he hath uncovered his sister's nakedness. He shall bear his, uh, it says he shall bear his iniquity. Meaning they're gonna be cut off from the people, they're gonna be cast out. Alright? Cast out from the congregation. Verse third birth, pardon me, verse 18. It says, If a man shall lie with a woman having her sickness and shall uncover her nakedness, her sickness is speaking of her menstrual period. So if a man have sex with a woman. Why she's on her cycle, according to the Bible, which and when it says sickness, dua in the Hebrew is dua. It would say menstruous. It says going to a woman's on her cycle. All right, on her period. It says if a man shall lie with a woman having her sickness, and shall uncover her nakedness, he has discovered her fountain. And she hath uncovered the fountain of her blood. And both of them shall be cut off from among their people. So you will be cut off and cast out from being an Israelite. You, have to, you couldn't even live in the land of Israel. You'll be a castaway. You'll be a fugitive. You, you, wouldn't, be able to, you wouldn't be able to live in the land. All right. Verse 19. So you're not supposed to be dealing with your woman while she's on her cycle, man. According to the Bible. Verse 19, it says, And thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of thy mother's sister. So your aunt. You're not supposed to have sex with your mother's sister. It says, Nor of thy father's sister, nor of your father's sister. You're not supposed to deal with them. It says, For he uncovered his near kin, because it's incest. It says, They shall bear their inequity. It says, If a man shall lie with his uncle's wife, and he hath uncovered his uncle's nakedness, they shall bear their sin, they shall be childless. Verse 21, it says, If a man shall take his brother's wife, it is an unclean thing. He hath uncovered his brother's nakedness, they shall be childless. Now there's a one exception for this. The only time a man can deal with his brother's wife is if the brother died with no children. That's according to the law. If, if you have a brother... Now, are we doing this in this society? No. But if you have a brother, a, a biological brother, and he has a wife, and he didn't have any children, you, that the, the nearest kin or the nearest brother of that man who died is supposed to take that wife and have, and, and have children through, um, with that wife. That's according to the law, man. So, see, you people don't know the law, man. All right? Let's see. Let me get that scripture so to prove all things. Let's see. See, this is Deuteronomy chapter 25. This is Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 6. It says, And it shall be that the firstborn, pardon me. Yeah, yeah, this is Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 5. It says, If brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her. And it shall be that the firstborn which she bears shall succeed 
in the name of his brother, which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. That's a law. According to the law, if that happens, that's what you're supposed to do. Verse 7, it says, And if the man like, pardon me, if the man like not to take his brother's wife, then let his brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders and say, my husband's brother refuses to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel. He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother. Then the elders of the city shall call him and speak unto him. And if he stand to it and say, I like not to take her, then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off his feet and spit in his face and shall answer and say, so shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house. See, so it wasn't about some sexual deviant thing. It was about building up his brother's house when his brother died childless. See? But in this society, you know, people would, you know, they'll think that's something that's, that's crazy to do. But meanwhile, these people are marrying trees and you have you have homosexuals raising up children. You got you got homosexuals and three three men raising up one child. All type of madness in this society. People are, are marrying trees and having sex with animals. But we're the crazy ones. We're the irrational ones. Which that law that law right there that I just read is pro-life. But these people are against life. That's why they kill. That's why they kill babies. They kill unborn babies. These people are murderous maniacs, man. They don't think they're going to be judged. They don't think they're going to be held to account. Yes, you will. Verse 22, it says, Ye shall therefore keep all my statutes and all my judgments and do them, that the land whither I bring you to dwell therein spew, ye, spew you not out. It says, and ye shall not walk in the manner of the nation which I cast out before you, which were the Canaanites. And what were the Canaanites doing? Having sex with animals, um, being homosexuals, uh, worshiping Molech and worshiping um, stones and idols. That's what the Canaanites, which the Canaanites are Africans. They were in our landmass prior to us, but the landmass was promised to us. But the Lord cast them out for their wickedness. And because he made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give them the promised land. But in continuation, it says, For they committed the pardon me, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. So the Canaanites, all that stuff that I just read earlier in the chapter, the Canaanites were doing. And that's all done in America and in the Western Hemisphere. In Europe, all this madness. Is having sex with animals and being homosexual, and and and, and killing your ba your unborn babies, killing your children, that's done in America. Adultery, adultery is is talked about in songs. Like these niggas rap about adultery, like adultery is cool. Yeah, I fucked this. I fucked this bitch. I did this and did that. Well, see, you gonna die, nigga. You maggot. You're gonna die. You in that that. Woman, if you can call her that, that specimen that you had sex with, you, both of you are going, both of you are going to die. You can't get away from the judgment of the heavenly Father. You better repent. And that's only if you're an Israelite. You heathens, you're going to die. Period. There's no repentance for you heathens. I mean, a lot of you Israelites, it's too late for you niggas. You still need to try to repent, but a lot of you guys, it's just too late for you. The Lord's not going to let you repent because he want to kill you. That's why he deceived you to think you, you know, to make you do what you're doing. So he can kill you. Because you're his meat. You're his sacrifice. You want to sacrifice your children? You want to go get abortions? Well, the Lord has a, he, you're his sacrifice. And he's going to put you through the fire.
Verse 22, it says, Ye shall therefore keep all my statutes in all my judgments and do them, that the land where I bring you to dwell therein spew ye not out. And ye should not walk in the manner of the nations which I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them, meaning I hated them. See, all these people talking about stop teaching hate, preaching hate. Well, first of all, the only reason y'all saying that because you are hateful people. You Edomites, you so-called white people, and you people who follow them, you're hateful. You hate the Heavenly Father's judgment. You don't think the God is right. You don't think Yahweh Bashim is right. And God hates you. You're talking about stop teaching. God hates you and he's going to kill you. You haven't seen hate yet. When you, haven't, when you haven't eaten for three weeks, then you'll know what hate is. When you're eating your little children that you committed adultery with to get, when you're eating their flesh and you're cooking them with pepper and salt because of the famine and because of the lack of bread, then you'll know what hate is. You'll know God hates you then. You niggas talking about hate. You ain't seen hate yet. You should shut your mouth. You ain't seen hate yet. When you women are being raped to death for being whores and the Lord bring that judgment on you and these troops come through, these Russian troops and these different mercenaries come through and you don't have nobody to protect you. All these proud ass black women talking about we don't need a nigga. Well, oh, you haven't seen hate yet, bitch. You haven't seen hate. But you're about to be acquainted with it very well. Verse 24, but I said unto you, ye shall inherit their land, and I will give it unto you to possess it, a land that floweth with milk and honey. I am Yahweh, your God, which have separated you from other people. He made us holy. That's what when he said he separated us. He, he separated us from doing the things that these other people do. There's they're basically the stuff that people in America do. That's that's not a, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. The Lord separated us and made us holy. Verse twenty five. Ye shall therefore put a difference between clean beasts and unclean, even the dietary consumption. You're not supposed to eat shrimp, crab, lobster, um, pigs. You're not supposed to eat camels. You're not supposed to just eat what you want. You're not supposed to eat catfish. It says, and see these people, they don't have a, they don't have discernment to know that they're not supposed to be eating oysters or shrimp. These people, they're savages, so they just eat whatever the hell they want. These people are savages. I eat shrimp if I want. I eat crab if I want because you're a nasty savage. That's why you don't have any morals and you don't have any decency, and you belong in the zoo. It says, in between unclean fowls and clean. Motherfuckers eating duck. Motherfuckers eating vultures and shit. Because they're savages. These people are savages. It says, and ye shall not make your souls abominable by beasts. Because you gotta understand, these, these unclean beasts have spirits. And you eat these unclean fowls, it put unclean spirits on you. That's why you people are so bugged out now. That's why you people stink. It says, or by any manner of living thing that creepeth on the ground, which I have separated from you as unclean. And But you're going to tell God that he don't know what he's talking about. A little maggot like you that ain't, hadn't been on the earth for 50, 60, 20 years, don't know your right hand from your left, don't, don't understand the anatomy of, of the body, you're going to tell the Heavenly Father was right. When he obviously said he separated clean from unclean. And don't try to pull that scripture out in the book of Acts with Peter because that's that's taken out of context. That's not what that's talking about. That's talking about uh that was it was likening um Israelite foreigners or Israelite Gentiles to being unclean beasts, but the Lord had cleansed them, and that's where you get the Gentiles being able to come back. It was these were Israelites who were cast off in former generations. And their households were cast off. 
But Yahweh Shah, that's why the scripture said, I have not come but for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The Lord came to restore that which was lost. Verse 26, it says, And ye shall be holy unto me. These people don't want to be holy. They're very unholy vessels. They're nasty. They just want to eat shrimp and they want to marry trees and have sex with the same gender and, and, and have sex with animals. That's what these people want to do and commit adultery and have sex with, their, with another man's wife. And these women want to jump on every penis they can find because they're, un, they're unholy creatures. They're unholy. It says, for I am Yahweh, am holy and have severed you from other people. This is talking about the elect. These other people, they're not going to get it. They're not going to get it. This, this is for the elect, though. It says that ye shall be mine. See, the elect, uh, that's the Heavenly Father. That's the first fruit of the Heavenly Father. These other people, they really were born in vain. So they can really kick rocks. We don't care. Just, just, they just got to die. Let them die. Verse 27, it says, A man also, or a woman, that have a familiar spirit, which is a, a witch, a wizard, an Egyptologist, a conscious community motherfucker. All right? The uh, a wizard. Uh, somebody's talking about Semiramis and Estar and talking about the stars and constellations and, and worshiping the damn stars and shit. You know, being a prognosticator and all this madness. All right. Worshiping stones, worshiping their ancestors, worshiping African deities, worshiping the water god and, and the god and the, and, the, and the earth god and all this madness, all this primitive savage garbage. It says, or that is a wizard shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones. Their blood should be upon them. So that's just a quick look into the law. The law is, of course, very expansive. But that's just a quick look into certain, certain, a certain aspect of the law. With that, I'm going to give all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh, Bashim Shai, Bashim Kakutash, the honor to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, and salutation to you, Akim. Shalom and keep the faith.